Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you tarot and witchcraft is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my lovelies. We have been a bit on a hiatus uh, working with the release of the book. You guys can look at the description box below. You'll be able to find all the links on there for the journals, the manifestation journals, the gratitude journals, the shadow work journals that are coming as well and the book release of manifest your destiny it is now available so you guys can get all of that on the links below all right my lovelies now let's get into the readings this is going to be the monthly reading for all the zodiac signs we're gonna look into what's going on in your life and um if you guys are new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos coming up we have tons of spell videos as well as uh, a bunch of predictions um, and readings, of course. So let's get into it. Let's get to the nitty gritty. We're going to begin here with my lovely Taurus. We are still in Taurus season. So for those of you guys that are having birthdays in this month, congratulations, my lovelies. I want to wish you guys nothing but prosperity, happiness, joy, abundance, love, and health. So let's get into it. We're going to begin here with Taurus. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Taurus. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to see, hear, sense, view, and receive the messages loud and clearly for Taurus, sun, moon, rising, and Venus for this month of May 2023. Tons of major transformative type of energy that we're experiencing. We just experienced the lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Uh, so a lot of transformations that are happening in whichever area of your life that you have Scorpio. Um, so definitely look at your placements. All right, let's get into it. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What's going on with Taurus for this month of May 2023? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. So the first card that you have here, Taurus, is the Three of Cups. Celebratory type of energy. I see you guys a little bit more coming out of your comfort zone. And this is collecting, uh, or for the collective, this is speaking about creating bonds, creating friendships, uh, people that are basically your tribe, people that are coming into your life that have or aligning their purpose to yours. A lot of a lot of empowering type of energy here, especially with female energy. So for a lot of you guys, this is reconnecting with friends. For others of you, you may start to experience that. Like I said, you start to uh, find your tribe. You come along or across people that are in the same um, in the same level where you're at at this point in your life. So a lot of support. Um, and like I said, I do see you guys getting out of your comfort zone. Now, the next card here is the two of pentacles. So uh, this is what you need at this point in your life. Balance is going to be very important for this month for you guys. Balance could signify, as an example, if you have a tendency of, of, of always uh, being very much in your work life and not really knowing how to balance your personal or private life, uh, there is a need for you to nurture every single aspect of your life. And this can also indicate, again, they are telling me with the three of cups here, um, sorry, not the three of cups. It is, yes, it is the three of cups. Uh, they are speaking about, um, being a little bit more social. So again, like I said, if you are, uh, which most of us are creatures of habit, you don't have, you know, you're not very outgoing or you're not very out there or putting yourself out there. I feel like there is this energy that is unfolding around you where life is going to be pulling you towards different directions in a very positive way because I see you guys coming out of your shell. So this is definitely a good thing. Your next card here is the sun card. Again, prosperous type of energy. This is blessings. This is uh, being joyful, having or being giving yourself the opportunity to actually enjoy life. So again, I see you guys nurturing certain aspects of your life where perhaps you felt like you haven't really put a lot of effort or energy uh, in that. And for some of you guys, this could be love and romance as well as we do have the Knight of Cups here. So what I do see is I see connections coming through for you guys for this month of May, connections that are going to be 
something that is not passive. It's not something that is temporary. So again, for those of you guys that are single, I definitely do see new connections being built here for you guys and a lot of positive energy coming through. You also have the nine of wands here and this is what's crowning your energy. So again, nine of wands is learning to not always be guarded, Taurus. You have to kind of bring your walls down sometime and allow yourself to connect with people or allow people to come into your life. Try the best you can for this month not to overthink uh, especially when we're talking about relationships and connections, anything that has to do with the romantic side, um, make yourself more available, make yourself more open to the possibilities. It's going to be very important and very crucial for this month for you guys. I also do see the six of wands here. So there's some type of victory, some type of celebratory type of energy of achievement. Um, so again, if you're able to bring your walls down, there may be a connection that comes through for you that it actually does develop into something more serious um, or that has the possibility to build something on a solid foundation. Six of Wands is always attention or getting a lot of attention and people noticing you a little bit more now, uh, especially for this month. I do see you guys being extremely hot with the sun and the Six of Wands, very intense, passionate type of energy. Um, play with that type of energy, Taurus. I feel like you guys have been uh, in this cycle of putting all your energy and effort, perhaps for some of you guys' career or family life. If you're a mother, this could be that you've made that a priority in your life, but you've kind of forgotten to reconnect with yourself, reconnect with the fact that you are a woman, you have needs and desires, and it's okay to be all of these different, you know, all of these different aspects in our life, but it's also important to make yourself a priority. Now, the next card here is the Five of Swords, and the Five of Swords is indicating to me as an advice, again, try the best you can not to be so guarded, not to be so on the defense, especially when it comes to getting advice. Maybe friends are giving you advice. Maybe friends are uh, pulling on your leg, telling you, hey, you know what? It's time for you to actually get a girl or get a guy. <laughs> Um, try the best you can not to be so defensive and not take things so personal. The next card here is the Nine of Cups. So this is the energy that is currently influencing you or currently affecting you. Nine of Cups is basically getting all your wishes fulfilled. It is really tapping into the abundant energy that is around you. Right now, your dreams, you can make them happen, Taurus. So with a little bit of dedication, a little bit of discipline, you will definitely be able to manifest or bring to you uh, the life of ex the type of experiences that you're wanting to experience or people or situations. The next card here is the Queen of Pentacles. This is your card, Taurus. You're coming on very strong, uh, very blessed. I feel like the month of May is going to be very bountiful for you guys when we're talking about your finances. But again, keep in mind, it's important for you to nurture other aspects of your life, okay? <laughs> it's not just work. And it's like I'm hearing myself, right? <laughs> I have often have to tell myself that, but um, definitely try the best you can to be in the present moment. Now, finally, here you have the Queen of Wands. So you may be dealing with a fire energy, Aries, Sagittarius, um, or Leo female that is going to come into your life or you're already dealing with them. This could be a mother figure. This could be a sister. This could be a friend that you trust. Um, that is really going to push you and in, in help you elevate yourself and be more confident, be more empowered. Um, again, we, we started off with the Three of Cups. So the Three of Cups is a lot of emotional support with groups, with charity, with uh, people that we surround ourselves with. And I feel that this Queen of uh, Wands is really going to be helping you get out of your shell. So get ready to get uncomfortable um, because it's necessary at this point for your growth as well as for your love life, my dear Taurus. All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed. Now let's go to, let's go to Gemini, see what's going on with Gemini here. Spirit guides, ancestors, what are the messages here for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May, 2023. What is unfolding for them? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. 
All right, Gemini, your first card here is the Four of Pentacles. And this is the current situation right now. You're a little bit reserved. Um, this could be a little bit detached at the moment. Um, I see you collecting. So this could be like physically collecting certain things. For others of you, it could just be collecting inventory of your life. For others, uh, it could represent uh, being a little bit guarded, uh, perhaps kind of being smart with your money at this point right now, uh, which is always a good thing, not necessarily a bad thing. Now, the obstacle to overcome here is the Nine of Swords. So I see a lot of frustration in regards to finances for some of you guys. Uh, this is an energy that you've been dealing with for a while now, perhaps for a month or so. Um, where there is almost this feeling of like not having enough and it doesn't have to be finances. This could be love. This could be uh, relationships. This could be connections. This could be just the desire to um, be able to do more things, but you feel like there is stagnant energy or you feel like it's really difficult for you to get out of that energy. My advice for you guys is when we're dealing with feeling or emotions that make us feel like we don't have enough, whether it's enough money, whether it's enough time, uh, whether it's it's kind of like a feeling of everyone else is doing things in their life and you look at your life and you may feel frustrated because you know, you're seeing the experiences that they're having and perhaps you're wanting to experience that and it just feels like a never ending cycle of stagnation. But one of the things that I teach you guys in the book, Manifest Your Destiny, um, it is that the more we tune into the energy of what we're experiencing, what we're feeling, the more you put energy towards that, the more you're telling the universe, continue giving me these experiences or uh, these lessons or these situations that make me feel like I don't have enough. Um, why? Because the universe doesn't discriminate. They don't, the universe does not care if you're being positive or you're being negative. It doesn't matter. They're going to reflect to you exactly what you're feeling. So again, if stagnation is something you've been dealing with for a while, my advice would be, um, to try the best you can to stay in the energy of being grateful or being thankful. A lot of the times clients tell me, well, you know, how do you feel good when you feel bad and you have nothing to feel good about. Well, that's not necessarily true because we always have abundance. We always have plentifulness around us. It's just that we don't focus on that. So my advice is, like I said, count your blessings, um, Gemini. Count your blessings. Be thankful. If you don't have much, but you were able to eat today, for example, then be blessed and be thankful and tell the universe, tell God, I am so thankful for the meal that I had today that was able to nourish me and nourish my body. The little things that you start to be more grateful for continue giving you the energy of staying in the vibration of gratitude. The more you start to have, the more you start to experience. So again, it is very important to get out of that mentality because here's the thing with the four of pentacles and nine of swords, it's like a recurring thing because you, it's, it's a recurring experience that you're going through, but most of it has to do with your mind. So getting yourself out of that mentality and forcing yourself in a way to think more positively and to focus or to shift your energy towards focusing on more positive things, you open the doors to possibilities and opportunities that will show up, Gemini. Your next card here is the Knight of Wands. So in the past, perhaps you were uh, a bit hasty or a bit quick in making decisions, in moving forward, um, maybe taking irrational or maybe making irrational decisions based on temporary relief. What they're telling you here is this is a cycle. This is something that we've been dealing with for a while, Gemini, with Seven of Pentacles. It's time to cut that habit and create a new habit that is going to bring to you um, more possibilities, but not just possibilities, that it's going to bring to you more of the experiences that you're wanting to have right now. Seven of Pentacles, it's always putting in the effort, putting in the energy towards what you're trying to accomplish or what you're trying to attain, um, and then being able to see the rewards from that. So again, 
understanding this. Six, six of pentacles is giving and receiving energy. So again, six and seven, um, giving and receiving. What you put out is exactly what you're going to get back. So start focusing primarily um, in the abundance around you. If it's love that you're trying to attain or if it's finances, whatever it is, try to focus your energy towards you know, the abundance of it. As an example, I don't have a partner and I'm frustrated because every par person that I deal with is not wanting what I'm wanting. Well, the reason why you're attracting the opposite is because you're focusing primarily on what you don't have. Therefore, you will attract exactly that, which is a person that does not possess what you're looking for. So the six of pentacles is being, a, being mindful more than anything, being mindful of what you're putting out because you can easily track that to what you are experiencing right now. Now, the next card here is the two of wands, expansion, growth, having the desire to want to travel for some of you guys. I definitely do see that coming up for some of you. Uh, I see short road trip for some. For others of you, it could be like going not necessarily to a different country, but I do see you guys taking on a more adventurous type of energy. Um, this would reflect to me a short uh, road trip or something like that. Um, but I, I do see that unfolding for you guys. And perhaps that is something that is necessary. Sometimes we have to get out of the energy that we're in in order to be able to uh, get more momentum. Now, your next card here is the Five of Cups. And this is the advice. Five of Cups is stop dwelling on the past. Stop looking at what you don't have. Stop uh basically stop making yourself sad on, on purpose. Uh, this is kind of the energy of, you know, when you're feeling really sad, what do we do? We go and put music that is going to make us more sad. And, and the reason we do that is the natural instinct. It is so that we can feel good about feeling bad because that's not our natural state of being. So again, stop dwelling on the past, Gemini. It's time for you to really put effort and energy towards the future. Put energy towards what you're wanting to experience, not what you don't have or what you're not experiencing right now. Your next card here is the Six of Swords. Moving on. So for some of you guys, it could be a situation where you've been dealing with someone uh, that was a constant instability in your life and there is still a desire to want to hear from them. But what Spirit is telling you is that at this point, it's important for you to walk away from what is not good for you. Um asking and praying, you know, uh, give us a sign. Let me know that this is the person that's right for me. And it's like the universe keeps giving you signs that it's time to move on. And there's still refusal there. So what spirit is telling you is at this point, it's time for you, for your health, for your mentality, for your um, well-being, it's best for you to move on from this energy. <clears throat> Now, the next card here is the Ace of Pentacles. There's an opportunity coming for you guys in regards to finances and career. With the Seven of Pentacles lighting it, um, the Ace of Pentacles here, what they're saying is putting effort or stepping up is going to bring to you more opportunities. So it's almost a situation where I hear oftentimes clients say, well, I don't really feel like I have to put extra work, you know, at work because they just don't, they don't, um, appreciate it or they don't take notice of that. But the moment you stop overdoing, I guarantee you they definitely notice. So if you go back to putting effort and energy, they're going to feel uh, like you are worthy of that raise, like you do deserve um, to give, to, to, to kind of inspire you to keep, you know, to get the ball rolling in regards to the effort and energy that you put towards your work. So I definitely do see an opportunity here uh, to be able to elevate yourself or to put in the work uh, because people are noticing. Higher ups are looking at your work right now. So uh, it is perfect timing to step up your game because I definitely do see um, some type of raise, some type of opportunity coming for you this month of May. All right. And the next card is the Two of Swords. So the Two of Swords is an indication of, again, we go back to there is an energy here of constantly looking at what you don't have. Um, so again, like I said, whether it's in finances, whether it's in stability with relationships and partnerships, stop looking at what you don't have control over right now. As an example, if you feel like it's stuck and things are not moving uh, forward the way you would hope, 
What they're telling you is stop focusing on that. Put your energy and effort towards what you do want versus what you don't want. This is what's going to help you release that stagnant energy and be able to experience the energy pretty much uh, running free, right? More organically where opportunities start to come in. We do have a lot of swords here. So again, it's a state of mind that you've been at for a while, Gemini. It's time to shake that up and to inspire yourself and to uh, really, you know, pick up the torch and decide this is my life and I'm going to decide what I want from my life. I'm no longer a victim. I'm no longer, um, you know, gonna just wing it, you know, have purpose and focus towards your goals and aspirations so that you can see the results of that, okay? All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on here with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, definitely like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you guys can help the algorithm. All right, let's see. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for them for this month of May 2023? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023. Thank you, Spirit. All right, your first card here, Cancer, is death and rebirth. So there is major transformation that's happening in your life right now. What I would say is try the best you can not to hold on to things that are or seem like they're falling apart. There is a purpose for this right now, and you have to go with this energy. The more you resist it, the more difficult it's going to be and the more overwhelming it's going to feel like. So again, for a lot of you guys, there is transformation that's happening but I also do see that there is almost like a refusal of wanting to accept certain things. What Spirit is saying is that everything that is being revealed to you right now, everything that is coming to the forefront, it is for you to see exactly where you're at or to know exactly where you stand with people and to make decisions. Do they better your life or do they make it more difficult? And if they're making it more difficult, then perhaps it's time for you to create some type of distance there. The next card here is the Empress card. Powerful, powerful energy when it comes to manifestations, when it comes to uh, abundance in general. The Empress is all about abundance. It's all about opulence. It's all about love, right? We have everything we can possibly ever want in life. We have it within ourselves if we're able to tune into that energy. With the Empress coming up as an obstacle, there is something that you're refusing to accept within yourself. So for some of you guys, it could be almost like feeling as an example, if it was a relationship that recently came to an end. For some of you guys, you are comparing yourself or you are questioning, what is it about me that wasn't able to attain this person or to have this person or etc. What Spirit is telling you is you have everything that you need within yourself. It is not when things don't work out or how other people treat you. It's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of them. You are the empress in this situation, Cancer. Know and understand that. Know that there is nothing, you know, from all the queens, there is, you know, queens and then there's the empress. The empress is above the queen. So it's understanding the value and the worthiness that you are and once you're able to understand this, then you would be able to understand again that the way people treat you is not a reflection of you, but a reflection of them. And if you've outgrown them, it's okay to move on from that, to no longer want to fight for connections that are not helping you grow in any type, shape, way, or form. So again, the next card that we have here is the Seven of Cups. So there was a bit of confusion for some of you guys dealing with a situation. It could have been a relationship that you were dealing with or that you may still be dealing with. And there is a refusal of accepting that it's no longer working out. Seven of Cups is having a lot of uh, options. But in the past position, it indicates to me feeling very confused, feeling like are we building on a sand uh, or on a you know castle that's built of sand type of thing. Um, it's not having the stability or not having the clarity of where we're going. And if you're not able to uh, have a clear vision of where this relationship is going, 
not to say you didn't, it seems to me like it was the person you were dealing with. But what I'm saying is that two people need to be on the same page in order to go towards, you know, what you're wanting to take this relationship further. So if there was an ending regarding this type of scenario or this type of situation, what they're telling you is you've outgrown this and it's okay uh, to walk away from this because it's not going to give you anything that at this point you are in need of. Now, the next card here is the moon card. This is indicating to me, again, feeling a bit confused, feeling a bit overwhelmed. There is a lot of uncertainty that perhaps you're scared of right now, Cancer. Doesn't have to be relationships. This could be in regards to your finances. This could be in regards to your life in general. I see you guys asking like the bigger questions in life. Um, and for some of you guys, there's almost this feeling of like not being in tune or feeling like there's a lot of confusion in regards to the future um, with the moon card here. Now, the next card that we have is the Ace of Wands. So this is a new beginning. This is finding some type of new hobby or some type of new endeavor that is going to bring to you a lot of fulfillment because it's charged with passion and intensity. This is kind of the energy of when you have an aha moment and you start to put your energy and effort towards, like I said, a hobby, a new endeavor, something that you are excited about, something that makes your heart beat again. That's what's unfolding for you. That's what's coming towards you, Cancer. Now, your next card here is the Tower. So major, major transformative energy here. We have the Death card. We have the Empress. We have the Moon and the Tower. So a lot of major arcanas right now. Whatever it is that you're being challenged right now in your life, know and understand that it has a lot to do with your self-development, has a lot to do with your birth chart and how it's set up. Um, these are transformative type of energy because there is an there is an evolution, there is need for your soul to continue evolving. So again, um, really, it may seem very overwhelming. There may have been some recent developments where you feel like your life has been turned upside down. This is something that was needed, Cancer. Just remember to breathe and understand that. Uh, nothing in life is temporary, even when it feels really dark sometimes. It is passive. It will pass. It is temporary. And you'll be able to um, rebuild on more solid foundation. You'll be able to find yourself and to really be you know, inspired and to really push forward in the way where you're taking charge of your life and you're also uh, living your life in purpose. Now, the next card here is the star card. What a beautiful card. You guys, you guys are definitely going through a shakeup for sure. You have a lot of major arcanas here. So this is indicating to me astrologically, you're greatly one of the ones that is being affected. The star card also promises what I just said. With the tower, the tower is a difficult moment in life. It is feeling like everything is completely changing and the rug has been pulled from underneath us. But with the star card, as the advice is what spirit is telling you is trust the universe. There is a reason and there is a purpose why you're going through this right now, Cancer. And the ultimate or culmination of this is to find your purpose or to find your path in life where you have a purpose, where it makes sense, where you feel like maybe you feel like you've been sleeping for a while and your your soul is finally waking up the star card is a beautiful card because it speaks to us about being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel being able to be rewarded by the universe because of all the craziness and chaotic shit that we've dealt with in the past this is basically the universe aligning itself to bring to you what you want so trust the universe in doing that your next card here is the Hierophant. You guys, a lot of major arcanas here. Um, this is being able to find your way. For some of you guys, this could be um, taking on a new path that is going to bring you to the person that you've always wanted or that you've always dreamt of. The Hierophant is a higher elevated type of commitment. With the star card, this is your destiny right now taking over. So anything that is ending cancer, gracefully accept it. 
and it's coming in quicker than you expect. Eight of Wands here, quick movement, a lot, a lot of powerful energy, a lot of intensity. Uh, if your life has been a bit boring for some of you guys, that's quickly going to be changing as things are going to be developing very, very quickly. And finally, we have the King of Wands. So for some of you guys, you're going to be dealing with a new person coming into your life, Cancer. This could be a fire energy, a Leo and Aries or a Sagittarius uh, that is bringing to you the stability that you've always hoped for. For some of you guys, that is bringing to you the stability that you hope you could have found in someone else. Um, Spirit is telling you, we heard you loud and clear. It is coming to you, though it is not coming from the person that you hoped for or that you wanted. Why? Because that person is not or no longer in alignment with you. Beautiful energy here, Cancer. All right. <clears throat> Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be masculine. It could be female energy as well. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to... Leo. <laughs> I had to think about it for a bit. All right. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on for you guys for this month of May 2023. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to this month of May 2023. You guys definitely stay tuned for the love readings. I will be uploading probably before the 15th so in the next couple of days i will be doing the love readings as well all right leo sun moon rising venus what is unfolding for them for this month of may thank you all right leo first card here nine of pentacles abundance around you this is uh, having more than enough being able to share being able to really experience new experiences through the opportunities that are being given to you this can also uh, symbolize the singlehood card for some of you. Now, we have the five of pentacles here, and this is the obstacle to overcome. So nine of pentacles is understanding that life is full of abundance in every aspect. Love, finances, career, health, whatever it is. The obstacle that you need to overcome is the feeling of unworthiness or the feeling of not being given the opportunities that perhaps you feel like you've deserved. So it's almost giving me the vibe or the energy of, as an example, you're the hardest working person at work, but it just seems like they don't appreciate that or they don't, um, they don't acknowledge that. So it's a feeling of frustration. It's a feeling of they don't appreciate what I do type of energy. What they're telling you here is this is what you need to overcome. This is what you need to let go of. Why? Because the more we feel that way, the more we get frustrated or we, the more we allow people um, to affect us in such a way that we start questioning ourselves or our po capabilities, I should say, um, the more you're vibrating from a, f a low frequency and what's going to happen is that more people seem to continuously keep ignoring your work ethic or how much effort you put into the things that you do. So it is about rebuilding your confidence for this month, Leo. For a lot of you guys, it could indicate um, not a lot of intensity or not a lot of passion when we're talking about love and romance. Um, but this is something that needs to be over overcome and by seeing the nine of pentacles, I see possibilities all around you. But I feel like the more you get frustrated, the more you deal with people and you feel like I'm just not connecting with them, the more you're kind of reminded of why you're single or why you want to be single. But again, we talk about energy. And when you focus primarily on that type of energy, then more people keep to show or keep showing up that shows us or makes us feel exactly that oh, I'm better off being single because I'm not really interested. Um, the When you're able to shake this out, when you're able to not allow people to have such control over you or your emotions, you take your power back. And especially for those of you guys in the workplace where there is frustration, uh, whatever frustration you're currently dealing with, the more you put energy towards that frustration, the more it seems to keep coming up. So my advice in regards to that would be 
to count your blessings, to be more thankful of the things that are going in your favor so that you can continuously keep raising your vibration and keep experiencing exactly that. Now, your next card here is the Page of Wands. For some of you guys, the passion is coming back into your life. Uh, for others of you, you may already be dealing with someone new. Three of Wands is expansion, it's growth. It is a lot of, right at the center is pentacles. And as you guys can see on the right and left side is intensity because it's Wands. So I feel like you've been reserved or you've had a, a bit of, for some of you guys, a dry spell, <laughs> but that's quickly going to be changing. Why? Because we do have passion and intensity showing up and coming into your life. For some of you guys, it could be having opportunities, opportunities you weren't even aware that were there. Someone's definitely exciting you or someone will definitely be sparking your interest this month, Leo. Now, your next card here is the Ten of Swords. It is ending a cycle for some of you guys, the ending cycle of um, not having a lot of excitement in your love life or could be not having a lot of excitement in the workplace as well. But I see you guys being more uh, intense and more ecstatic is what I'm hearing for some of you guys. So I do see someone showing up for you. There is an ending cycle here and I do have the King of Pentacles, what's coming to you that is unexpected. So for some of you guys, you may be dealing with an earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo type of energy. This is more on the mature type of side. This is a person that could be stable or a possibility uh, of being very emotionally grown, emotionally uh, stable. Um, and this is uh, perhaps it's coming out of nowhere for some of you guys. So you can meet this person either at work or you can meet this person through some so type of social media. We do have page of wands and three of wands. Um, so for some of you guys, it could be that you're starting or beginning your online dating type of thing and uh, good things start to unfold. Now, your next card here is the eight of swords and the eight of swords is as your advice card. So again, the advice here is release yourself from your fears. I feel like some of you guys, sometimes you hold yourself back because of fear, whether it be because in regards to relationships, you don't fully allow yourself to open up because perhaps you're scared of getting hurt again. But if you keep yourself or keep everyone at arm's length, you'll never find out if you can actually genuinely connect with someone. Eight of Swords also indicates, uh, like I said, being stuck or being binded to a situation that uh, creates a lot of a lot of overthinking, a lot of stress. This is your advice. Free yourself from that type of energy. Be more optimistic and more positive for this month, Leo. Your next card here is the Hanged Man, seeing things from a very different perspective, being enlightened for some of you guys, uh, taking on a new practice, a new type of meditative type of energy where you're becoming more more purpose, purposeful in what you're trying to draw into your life. For some of you guys, it could be that you're starting to tap into manifestations. You're trying to direct your energy. You're empowering yourself by uh, taking action in a positive way, but also taking action towards a focus, a goal, something that is going to keep your, basically your eye on the prize type of energy, which I'm loving that energy, by the way. Your next card here is the Five of Swords no longer sacrificing yourself, no longer allowing people to even, you know, depend on you to a certain degree. I see you guys cutting a lot of toxicity in your life, and this could be with connections, this could be with friends, this could be with longtime friends, um, where you're starting to realize that they are greatly impacting your life or your well-being or your state of mind. And you're going to be cutting out a lot of those connections. Again, with the hanged man here, seeing things from a very different perspective and not allowing yourself to uh, be rattled by other people's drama or by other people's um, other people's <laughs> drama is what's coming through. So for some of you guys, it could be having the need to really put your foot down and say, you know what, I love you and I care for you and I'm here for you, but like, this is drama is something that is always going on in your life. And what I'm looking for right now is peace. Um, so you start to create certain distance there. Now, finally, your card is the 10 of cups. Don't be scared of going for your happiness, Leo. 
I'm going to tell you guys this. For the month of May, it's going to be very important to be spontaneous, to keep that spontaneity type of energy because this is what's going to get you out of this energy of habit or routine. So be more spontaneous for this month. The more spontaneous you are, the more you open yourself up to possibilities, the more experiences you're going to start to have that are going to reignite that, you know, that fire, that passion, that heart of yours that is so big. Um, and it's almost like these experiences are going to thrill you because I am seeing you being almost like going from like complete dullness or being just there, you know, to being so excited to wake up every day and see what the new day has to bring to you. So this is a major shift in energy that is happening. So the more open you are, the more spontaneous you are, the more exper beautiful experiences you're going to start to have that are going to make you feel like life is progressively moving for the best and for the good of you. So very, very beautiful energy, Leo. All right, now let's go to Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Virgos. If you guys are interested in any of our journals or the book Manifest Your Destiny, you guys will definitely be able to click on the description box below and find all those links on there. Those of you guys that are trying to set up appointments with me for consultations or any type of spell work or workings or cleansings, um, you will also be able to find the on our online store on the description box below. All right, let's see what's going on with my lovely Virgo sun, moon, rising. Oh, we have a card popping out. I will take it. Thank you. All right, we're starting off here with the king of cups, Virgo. So very in tune with your emotions. Um, I see you guys opening up or going through a cycle where you're going to be much more sensible. Now, something they are telling me is if you're starting to experience or have been experiencing for a while now, like headaches, uh, it's going to be very important for you to ground yourself, Virgo. And the reason for this is because I see your channel really being open right now. So you may start to experience almost an overload of energy because everyone around you is greatly affecting you and is greatly impacting your energy. So again, grounding is something that I would highly encourage you guys at this moment. Your next card here is the Two of Swords, and this is the obstacle that needs to be overcome for this month of May. So the Two of Swords indicates to me trying to find some type of solitude or trying to find the answers, the answers that ultimately are always within you. So again, with the King of Cups here, it makes great uh, sense. What they're telling you is if you're trying to find clarity, or you're trying to find certain answers, those answers you will be able to find within yourself, Virgo, but you need to allow yourself to feel that. So again, meditation, grounding is something that I would highly encourage you guys to do for this month, as this is going to help you cut out all the noise and really focus on what it is that you want and make decisions based on what you want that are going to help you get to that path of whatever it is that you're trying to manifest or whatever it is that you're trying to experience. Now, your next card here is the Nine of Cups. This is wish fulfillment. This is happiness. Uh, could have been a hope or some type of desire that you were trying to manifest or that you were trying to experience. You Perhaps for some of you guys, you opened yourself up to someone recently and there was almost a feeling of like instant regret or feeling like they didn't appreciate that or they didn't appreciate the sacrifice that you did. And the five of swords is indicating to me feeling like your ego was hurt in the process. It's like, I don't open myself up to anyone and here I was and they didn't appreciate that. But again, we go back to the center, which is a king of cups. Do not allow yourself to close yourself off just because someone that came into your life that let you down or that wasn't who they said they were. Uh, don't let them affect you in the in the way of shutting down completely or, you know, bringing up your walls again, because what spirit is telling you is that your happiness or the desire that you've been hoping or wanting is already in your energetic field. You just have to allow yourself to be completely open to be able to experience this or to be able to receive it. 
Your next card here is the Ten of Cups, and this is what's crowning your energy. So I do see some type of wish fulfillment happening for you guys. Uh, for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that are single, I do see a relationship coming through for you. And I will go as far as to say either the connection begins this month or you will find yourself in a relationship by the end of May. Now, your next card here is the Eight of Cups. So there was a decision to walk away from something or someone that hurt you. But again, I feel that this was for the better. Why? Because I do see wish fulfillment and happiness being able to or you being able to attain it but only through the walking away of something that was no longer working for you, Virgo. Your next card here is the star cards. You guys have beautiful, beautiful cards. It's almost like what I'm seeing is for some of you guys, you could have had some type of expectation or some type of want that didn't fully come through for you and you felt like you were either let down or disappointed. But what Spirit is showing me here with the star card, eight of cups and the 10 of cups, you are being pulled towards your happiness, Virgo. You are being led or being guided by your spirit team that is guiding you to that manifestation or to that happy place that you're wanting to experience. It is coming through for you and it is already there. All you have to do is surrender and trust the process. Your next card here is the lover's card. And this is ultimately the, you know, obviously partnership and relationships when we're talking about. But this is also a soulmate type of connection for some of you guys. This eclipse definitely heightened that. So this eclipse could have progressively been in one of the major important houses of relationships, which uh, potentially could be your fourth house, your fifth house or your seventh house. Um, it is talking about being you know, reignited or in realignment with a soul type of connection, a soulmate, uh, a partner that is meant to come into your life. Or for some of you guys, if recently connected with someone and you feel like you guys have known each other or like you guys can kind of read each other's minds, the reason for it is because you guys do have a soul connection. Um, and again, it comes through it comes through as like they came in right in the moment where there was major transition or major change in your life that was happening. So beautiful energy here. We also have here the full card. This is an indication of a new beginning, a new chapter, um, being inspired, being motivated. This connection for some of you guys is going to be very, very beneficial for you because not only is happiness there, but what they're showing me here with the full card is that they will show you how to see the world in a very different way where you're more inspired and you don't see so many blockages. Like, um, as an example, sometimes we often, uh, when we're trying to do things in our life, whether it's a new job, whether it's a new business or whatever, we kind of focus on how difficult it's going to be to get there. Um, without even taking action towards it yet. It's like we're kind of putting ourselves in this energy of like worrying without reason because you're not even there. You're not even crossing that bridge. When a person comes into your life and you feel like there is a soulmate type of connection, they reignite the flame within you. You are so intense and so passionate about the connection and there is, there's a reason why people say there's no grander um drug than or to feel like you're drugged um than what it is to be in love and it is true because when you are in love you're inspired you're happy you feel fulfilled in every aspect of your life you don't see obstacles right everything is rosy um and this is major major momentum and possibilities like you don't see the obstacles you see only possibilities so again, I feel like this person coming into your life is really going to open up a lot of doors for you because you're no longer seeing things from a uh, critique way or perhaps you're not seeing things in a cynical way. Uh, you're seeing it more through positive energy and sky's the limit type of energy. So beautiful, beautiful energy here, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to... Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra. What are the messages for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023. What is unfolding for Libras? How are you, Libra? Let me have some coffee because my mouth is dry. Okay. 
Okay. Are you guys a coffee person? Because I am. Your girl is for sure. <laughs> I cannot function without caffeine. All right. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023. One more shuffle. All right, here we go. All right, Libra, your first card here is the Ace of Cups. Beautiful energy. This is you being open to the universe. This is you being open, inspired for some of you guys, tapping into your creative Um for some of you guys being inspired or emotionally inspired through music, um, if you are more on the creative aspect, as an example, if you write, if you make music, if you are more into the creative outlook, I see you guys extremely inspired this month uh, for sure. And I feel like a lot of that inspiration is going to bring to you guys or open new doors for you uh, for this month. Now, your next card here is the Knight of Swords. There was some type of perhaps wanting to make a very quick decision based on love or based on your partner or based on a romantic situation. Um, you perhaps were a bit hasty or perhaps didn't really think things through. Five of Swords is indicating... Um, you guys could have had or could currently be going through not being able to feel like you guys are on the same page. And I feel like it's ego based right now. So even if you try to open up, it almost feels like it's falling on deaf ears. And the reason for it is because they're not really hearing you out. Like I said, they're vibrating more from an ego standpoint. They want to be right just for the sake of it. So I feel like the more you try to open up or the more you try to express, they're not really listening to you. They're not really hearing you. Um, and this is not necessarily a good thing because I feel like you're overextending yourself at this point, Libra. Your next card here is the Two of Swords. So there is definitely not hearing or not being on the same page, not seeing each other eye to eye. And there is a lot of frustration here. There is frustration on your part because I feel like you've been open or you've been trying to be uh, very understanding. Uh, but with the Two of Swords, there is a need for you to pull back and to find yourself uh, or to realign yourself because I feel like there is a feeling of overextending, overdoing. Um, and what Spirit is saying is you got to take a step back. You, you got to pull your energy back. You got to focus on yourself and make yourself a priority. At this point, I feel like they're not hearing you out. And there's no point in arguing when both sides are not willing or open to hear each other out. Your next card here is the Ten of Cups. So this is definitely some type of connection or relationship that you're dealing with. Eight of Cups is something that you've thought about for a while now. Um, is it best to hold on to this or is it best to walk away? I feel like whether you are the one that makes that decision or not, Libra, I feel like someone in this connection is getting to that place where they don't want to hear it anymore and they're willing to walk away or they will be willing to walk away from this connection. I honestly feel like you fell for or you seen this person a certain way and I feel like they've been revealing who they truly are. And you're waiting for them to go back to acting the way they were in the beginning. But the thing about it is that who they presented themselves to be in the beginning was not who they are. So it's like waiting in vain. You're waiting for someone to show up that was never really there. And this is why there is a need to understand that at the end of the day, if the person is not willing to hear you out, is not willing to actively participate in hearing each other out, then this is not going to work. And you can ignore it. You can pretend like it doesn't bother you to not be heard, to not be understood, but it does bother you. And it comes to a point where you feel alone, even when you're in a relationship. So what Spirit is telling you is that at this point, it's time to stop holding on to a fantasy or holding on to a person that you thought you fell for. 
that ended up never being that person. The advice here is the six of swords. It's time to walk away from this connection. It's not really bringing you anything. And with the high priestess, you've been knowing this. You've been sensing or you've been feeling like things are off. Like they're not being completely transparent with you. Like you've been intuitively picking up that it's time to keep it moving. And at this point, what Spirit is saying is listen to that intuition, Libra, because you're never going to go wrong if you truly listen to your intuition. That is your GPS. That is your guide. And with the high priestess here, it's knowing that it's been time to move on. Now, your next card here is the queen of wands. This is fiery type of energy. This is trusting yourself. This is believing in yourself, knowing what you deserve, knowing that you're worthy. And if they cannot appreciate that, then show them what it is to not have you in their life anymore. This is being empowered and knowing your power, taking your power back. And finally, we have the chariot card here. Success and victory coming to you through a difficult situation, but feeling more like you have purpose, finding yourself all over again and knowing the power that you truly possess, Libra. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Scorpios. What are the messages for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023. All right, here we go. First card here is the Three of Wands expansion is what's coming to you what's coming to you scorpio is what you deserve i feel like you guys have been going through major transformations major cycles in your life where um karma had a lot to do with it or dealing with karma or seeing other people deal with karma but with the three of wands is being patient in a situation where you feel like maybe you didn't have control the positive in this is that your blessings are finally coming to you, what you've earned, what you deserve at this point in time. Now, your next card here is the King of Pentacles, and this is the obstacle that you need to overcome. King of Pentacles can indicate stagnant energy and the aspect of being stubborn, not being extremely open to new possibilities or new ways of doing things. Um, as an obstacle, it is indicating to you that there is a need for you to let go or to work on being too stubborn. Sometimes being too stubborn keeps you in situations that instead of help you, it becomes a detriment to your growth. Uh, it's almost like holding on to things, not because you love, not because you care, not because you're that invested in it, but more because you want to be right or more because you want to prove yourself to someone or something or yourself and this could become like i said it can be holding you back so this is a cycle that you need to let go of uh, or a quality or trait that you need to let go of now your next card here is the seven of pentacles and seven of pentacles is looking towards the past or perhaps a habit of revisiting the past where right at the center three of wands um having the need to stop looking to the past or stop comparing the past. For some of you guys, it could be you have a habit of comparing your new partners to people that you've dated in the past. You need to stop doing this. And the reason for that is because as time progresses, you grow. And as you grow, so do other people or the people that you dated in the past. So who they were in the past may no longer resonate with them because we change and evolve every single day. So uh, for some of you guys, it could be like, you know, thinking of someone from the past and you kind of have them on a pedestal uh, because you realize that um, because you realize that, you know, it was good at some point in the past. But uh, again, you've outgrown this and it's time to understand that it's time to let go more than anything. Now, your next card here is the Hierophant, and this is in your near future position. So I do see an, a growth evolution. 
I do see you guys going literally up the ladder. For some of you guys, this is growing in your finances. This is having a glow up, I'm going to be honest, um, especially with the King of Pentacles there. So whatever you felt like was uncertain, for some of you guys, if you've been having trouble at work or feeling like um, things are not that stable or not that steady, that's quickly going to be changing and you're going to start feeling more in control of that or feeling like you're more stable or like things are becoming more stable at work. Um, I do see growth here and advancement. Your next card here is the Page of Wands. And this is what's crowning your energy, being more optimistic about the future, Scorpio. Um, this can also indicate having the need to embrace more spontaneity in your life, uh, being a little bit more open. Uh, I know that's not something that Scorpios are known for. Um, but you do need to be more inspired. And the only way to be inspired is to try once in a while to be more spontaneous. Now, your next card here is the Four of Pentacles. So uh, being reserved, again, like I said, there is a habit that you have a tendency of doing, whether it's being extremely reserved or being extremely stuck in the mud and not wanting to change certain things. What Spirit is telling you is that at this point in your life, you've ended certain cycles and you are in the commencement or beginning of a new cycle. With this new cycle, you need to be more open to the possibilities. Your next card here is the Knight of Wands. A lot of fiery type of energy here unfolding for you guys. Uh, for some of you guys, I do see road trips. I do see more travel um, that is going to be coming up for this month. Not just me, but I see it almost like towards the end of August where there's going to be more opportunities. Again, take those opportunities, Scorpio. Your next card here is the Page of Pentacles. This is kind of walking with purpose. This is attaining or keeping your eye on the prize. Uh, definitely coming through. Even if you felt like it was slow in the making with the Six of Pentacles here, it's like you're being handed exactly what you deserve or you will be given those opportunities that you felt maybe at some point in the past, they kind of passed you by. It's coming back around. And the reason for it is, like I said, it's the universe giving back to you everything that you've earned, everything that you deserve at this point, um, Scorpio. And finally, we're ending here with a beautiful card, the Ace of Cups. So everything that you give out for this month, and let me clarify that, okay? Everything that you give out this month is exactly what you're going to receive, Scorpio. So this could be good. This could be bad. What do I mean by that? If what you're spewing is hate, that's exactly what you're going to get back. If what you're doing is coming from a place of love, being nurturing and giving as much as you possibly can, whether it's just hearing your friend out, whether it's just being an emotional shoulder to cry on, whether it's um, literally getting off the freeway like it happened to me yesterday and you see a person that is hungry or starving, um, it doesn't cost you very much to give them, you know, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you're able to give to them. Um, and you can completely change their life just on that one second. You know what I mean? Like this person, the way I felt was this person, for all I know, could have gone for like four or five days without eating. And if I was able to go out of my way to try to help them and to give them so that they can have for like the week or something, then um, and not doing it because you have to, but you're doing it from, like I said, a place of love, then you will be reciprocated. Uh, and like I said, this happened to me yesterday. And as soon as I got back home, um, I was doing some exchanges with the client and conversating, whatever. And then uh, I forgot what exactly happened, but um, it was kind of like me having to get out of my way to do them a favor. And that's exactly what I did. And then boom, today, um, the weirdest thing happened. I go to the store and actually no, to the postal office. And when I got off, I literally found um, $20 on the ground. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so sweet. And I thought of the guy from yesterday. So what I'm saying is reflection is what you're going to be getting for this month. So come from a loving place, a place of um, giving love. And that's exactly what you're going to receive. Putting in the work, you're definitely going to be reciprocated by getting advancements, getting bonuses, getting a raise even. Um, so again, with purpose, my lovely Scorpios. All right. Now let's go to 
Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with my Saggies. How are you doing, Sagittarius? What are the messages for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus for the month of May 2023? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Sagittarius for the month of May 2023. All right, here we go. Sagittarius, you're starting off here with the Ten of Wands. Feeling a little bit burnt out is what I'm hearing. For some of you guys, you've been going through a, cha a cha uh, challenging situation where you feel like you've been overburdened. You've been carrying a lot of responsibilities or feeling like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Um... But the positive in this with the tens, it's always coming to an ending cycle. It is going from the ten to going back to the to the ace, right? So uh, there is a transition that's happening here where you may have felt overburdened or like you were carrying a lot of responsibilities, um, but that's quickly going to be dissipating for you as I do see the light, right? I see the light at the end of the tunnel being guided more than anything. Uh, your next card here is the king of wands this is your energy the obstacle that needs to be overcame at this point sagittarius is overcoming your pride and this is something that i can totally connect and totally relate to there is some of us are just built this way right we don't do it on a conscious level it actually comes through in a very subconscious way on our subconscious mind where Sometimes it's really difficult for you to ask for help or sometimes it's really difficult for you to accept that you can't carry a lot of these responsibilities because if we really think about responsibilities, a lot of the times we have a tendency of taking on other people's responsibilities. And like I said, I can totally relate. Um, I can be extremely stubborn. And even if it's a lot to deal with, I still deal with it. And only those that are really close to me that really know me and know my nature, they will give themselves without asking. As an example, if I'm, you know, coming from the market or something and I'm carrying all of these bags and because I'm, you know, just trying to take care of it as soon as possible, um, they'll see me come, you know, they'll see me come or whatnot, and they quickly rush and help me and, you know, without me asking. Why? Because I'm not necessarily the type to ask. So that's what I'm seeing here. I feel like there are certain things that you've taken on Sagittarius without you really having to take those responsibilities, but it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to say, you know what, this is too much and I cannot deal with all of this and just even if it's just for emotional support, like talking to a friend or expressing yourself to someone that you trust just to hear you out. Sometimes that's all you really need, but you kind of have to get out of your own way. And sometimes our lessons is to learn to ask for help. Um, so I feel like this is kind of the energy that you're going to be experiencing for this month. Whenever you feel like things are just becoming too much, and there is need for you to ask for help. Don't hold back because of your pride. Don't hold back because of whatever hangups you have about yourself. Ask for help because the help will be there for you, Sagittarius. Now, your next card here is the Hanged Man. This is a transition that you're going through where you have to learn to see things from a different perspective. Obviously, dealing with overburden, um, overwhelmingness, being burnt out, obviously that's not good. It doesn't feel good. And at this point, you have to learn to see things from a different perspective. You have to learn to ask for help when it's necessary, when you need help. Um, and this is a lesson that you must learn. If you don't, what's going to happen is that the universe is going to keep throwing things at you where you literally get to a point of having to break down. You don't want that. I don't want that for you. So again, master this lesson, Sagittarius. 
your next card here is the four of cups feeling disconnected um feeling a bit like things are not necessarily going in your favor right now but again this is something temporary you will overcome this type of energy Sagittarius I would however like I said highly encourage you guys to put your pride aside um sometimes pride could be our worst enemy and three of pentacles is exactly what I just said this is what's crowning your energy help and assistance is there for you Sagittarius you just need to learn to ask for it your next card here is the five of wands arguments or discord in the family dynamic or the people that you're dealing with on everyday basis could feel a bit overwhelmingness um, of energy of like just being extremely drained of your energy again try the best you can not to if you have a lot of things going on and then you have needy friends or you have you know a needy partner that is constantly just bickering and and if you're not giving them attention if you're not doing for them it's like a cause and way to argue um, it's time for you to cut that type of energy. And the only way to do that is to protect your sanity, to protect your health and your mental stability. Even if you have to put the foot down and be like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to be dealing with this type of energy. Why? The hanged man is simply indicating here that there is a transition, a temporary transition that you're going through. And in order for you to get to the next level in your life, you have to make difficult decisions. And with these difficult decisions is one of them learning to ask for help or learning when to not help, especially if it's the draining of, you know, the, your connections, people expecting too much from you. You have to take your power back. You have to say no or learn to say no, Sagittarius. Next card here as the advice position, the tower, whatever is unfolding in your life right now, know and understand that this is part of your destiny, Sagittarius. There are lessons to be learned. The tower also indicates, you know, collectively an extremely shakeup. Um, but the reason for this is because there is a need for your soul to evolve. So though you may feel like everything is being thrown your way right now, I promise you, you will get through it ask for help when help is available to you and this will help you go into the next cycle having more stability or rebuilding on a solid foundation the empress card next to the tower major transition in regards to stability in regards to your finances in regards to up until now the type of stability you've had there is a new beginning for you. And in this new beginning, there's much more abundance to have and to experience. But you cannot resist the changes that are happening right now. The more you resist it, the more difficult it's going to be for you. Your next card here is the Page of Cups. Having, like I said, relatives, having people that love you, that support you, that will get you through this. Uh, be open with them. Uh, express yourself, express your feelings and your emotions at this time right now. And finally, ending with the sun, you're being blessed. Um, this is, you know, unexpected blessings that come your way. This is unexpected help that comes your way. This is, you know, having the, sometimes it takes courage to ask for help. And when you finally ask for help, the person that is, you know, that will be there to support you will actually open up more doors for you. So again, um, you may be going through difficult and challenging situations right now that are really testing you, Sagittarius, but you will get through it and you will be able to see light at the end of the tunnel. And you will also be able to even experience a bit of surprise that um, someone may uh, surprise you in a way of helping you, um, whether it's, you know, a loan that comes through, whether it's a friend or a loved one that... Um, sees that you're struggling and tries to help you and, and and it's just unexpected you weren't really expecting it but i definitely do see blessings coming your way so weather the storm you will get through it sagittarius all right my lovelies now let's go to capricorns let's see what's going on for capricorns sun moon rising venus for the month of may 2023 if you guys enjoy these videos like share and comment don't forget to subscribe to our channel all right, 
Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023. Capricorn. All right, here we go, Cappies. All right, we're starting off here with the Eight of Wands. Whoa. A lot of passion, a lot of intensity. Um, I do see a lot of opportunities coming to you guys this month of May. And I'm going to be honest, I've been experiencing that myself. <laughs> Eight of Wands is always passion. It's the arrows of love. It is options. It is talking about quick uh, picking up of, of the momentum um, where there could have been stagnation in the past. I see it evolving and growing and coming in very quickly for a lot of you. The next card that you have here is the lovers. Um, again, I do see options coming your way, Capricorn, for some of you guys. Uh, you may feel like you are at crossroads in some type of connection uh, with your partner, with the person that you were dealing with, where you're starting to see other options and other possibilities and you are unsure what to decide or uh, whether to turn right or whether to turn left. Um, my advice is go with the flow right now because with the eight of wands, there's a lot of, a lot of, um, momentum that's happening. And I feel that this momentum is going to propel you um, to what's meant for you. So again, go with the flow right now. Now your next card here is the star card. Beautiful energy here, my lovely Capricorns. The star card is being illuminated for some of you guys, especially if you guys have Aquarius in a very important placement. As an example, your fourth house, your fifth house, or your seventh house, or even 11th house. Um, this is greatly being highlighted right now. Obviously, we we are going to be or have been experiencing Pluto and Aquarius. It will be retrograding back to Capricorn, but it will be going back into Aquarius and stationing there for the next coming 15 years. So for a lot of you guys, what this is indicating is there is um, destiny that's taking or that's taking place in your life or that will be taking place in your life where it's going to bring to you the person um your lifetime partner, basically. So again, I would highly encourage you guys to look at your natal chart and to see where exactly you have Aquarius because that's really very highlighted for me right now. So um, what they're saying is that with this Pluto energy, it is transformative energy that's coming through, but also bringing to you that connection or that relationship that uh, is going to be life-changing or life-altering. Your next card here is the Ten of Swords. So there are cycles that are being ended right now. You're ending a lot of cycles, a lot of karmic cycles as well, or connections with people that you've had in the past, perhaps relationships, partnerships that were not necessarily that stable or that were hot and cold. You're finally coming to that end. Why? Because your destiny is taking over. So for a lot of you guys, a lot of momentum in your love life, Capricorns. Your next card here is the Two of Swords. Try the best you can to get out of your own head. Don't overthink. Don't overanalyze. If you're dealing with multiple people or you will be dealing with multiple people, if at some point you feel like you have to make a decision, no, you don't. What Spirit is telling you is go with the flow. Pay attention to what Spirit is trying to guide you, what they're showing you right now. You don't want to be impulsive, overthink, or over worry yourself to think or to feel like you have to make decisions because the universe and spirit is going to weed out the ones that are not for you bringing to you the one that's meant for you and you have the king of wands so what is it unexpected to you is a fire energy coming through aquarius sorry not aquarius uh sagittarius a leo or an aries uh person that is coming through for you that's what you don't see coming this could be the person that is being aligned for you that will cross your path this month in may now your next card here is the four of cups if you feel disconnected or you feel like um, you're not really focused on love or anything like that keep thinking that <laughs> Because the universe is going to uh, pretty much push you in the direction that you need to nurture, which at this point, uh, for a lot of you guys, it's your love life that needs nurturing. Your next card here is the three of pentacles, getting assistance, uh, working in community or collaboration for some of you guys. Uh, this could indicate uh, reconnecting or strengthening the bond of family and the family dynamic. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be reconnect or reconnecting with someone 
uh, a relative or family member that perhaps there was a bit of a falling out. I definitely see them uh, coming through or trying to reconnect, trying to sew in uh, or fix whatever needed to be fixed um, for this month. And we have the Ace of Cups, beautiful energy here. This is your hopes and desires or your hope and dreams. Ace of Cups is emotional stability. It is, uh, you know, touching every single aspect of your life when you are inspired and when you are positive and optimistic, uh, Capricorn. And the Knight of Swords, I see love coming in for you guys very strongly for this month of May. So exciting news for my Cappies out there. All right, now let's go to... Aquarius, let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023? What are the messages for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023? Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For the month of May 2023. Aquarius, you guys are definitely going through major shakeups and transformations for sure. All right, we're starting off here with the Page of Wands. Very enthusiastic about the future. I see you guys inspired for some of you guys going on or taking on a new endeavor, um, a new start. It's almost like uh, your soul is being reignited right now. Now, your next card is the Eight of Cups. You could have gone through a cycle of having to walk away from certain connections or certain relationships that were no longer uh, in tune with what you're wanting or where you're wanting to go in life. For some of you guys, it's the realization um, that perhaps what you wanted is not necessarily exactly what your partner wanted. Um, whether you've gone through this or or not, for some of you guys, you may be currently dealing with this type of energy, but I do see you guys ultimately making the decision of having to choose yourselves. Um, and this is almost like a, a feeling of like being, like to be completely honest with yourselves, to know exactly what it is that you want and to not apologize for it. I feel like for some of you guys, there is almost this feeling of like emotional roller coaster. Um, but ultimately, if you cannot have the same aspirations or the same vision, the same goals of your partner, at some point, that's definitely going to greatly impact the relationship because it may take you guys the opposite direction. So again, there is decisions to be made for this month. Now, your next card here is the Nine of Wands. This is um, creating boundaries. Um creating boundaries and I feel like for a lot of you guys this is something you've been doing for a while now almost like making it a priority of yours to either be your authentic self or to no longer allow people to I don't want to say use you but almost like putting boundaries on people that perhaps you greatly love and care for um that are not necessarily that you know it gives me more of the energy of like toxic energy um, and having to create those type of boundaries uh, out of necessity. Now, your next card here is the Ace of Swords. This is communication. This is also an indication of aha moments. This is paying attention closely to your GPS, which is your intuition. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're getting a lot of spiritual downloads that are either you're already experiencing or you will be experiencing this month. And ultimately, what they're saying is that this can potentially open more doors up for you. So whether it's um, ideas, whether it's uh, your intuition guiding you or telling you to start your own business or to, you know, take that trip that you've been, you know, putting, you know, behind uh, or you keep putting it in the back burner. This is like having the need to realign yourself. And sometimes in order to do that, we kind of have to find ourselves. And sometimes finding ourselves means going to a different city, going to a different country, giving ourselves enough time to reconnect with ourselves. And that's definitely what I'm seeing for you guys. Now, your next card here is the Page of Pentacles. It's been a very long journey for you guys, especially when we're talking about finances or stabilizing your finances. I definitely do see the Queen of Pentacles coming through for you. I feel like for some of you guys, you may be dealing with an Earth energy Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, this could be a female energy around you. This could be a mother figure. 
But I feel like for a lot of you, especially on the masculine side, this could be a woman that's coming in for you um, that is realigned with, like I said, there is something that's going to connect you guys, whether it's like a new endeavor that you're taking on. I feel like this person comes into your life and brings more of a, more of a practical approach that helps you get it off the ground, whether it's a business, whether it's a new endeavor, whatever it is. I feel like this person really opens your eyes to the possibility and kind of pushes you to take action towards that. And that's really what's going to open up a lot of doors for you, Aquarius. Now, your next card here is the Hermit card. This is the, you know, solitude. This is being with yourself. This is finding or listening to your intuition, reconnecting with your spirituality, um, listening more than anything, tuning in to what your desires are, tuning in to what your wants and needs are at this point. Your next card here is the King of Swords. I feel like this is your energy, Aquarius. This is you realigning yourself. This is you. For some of you guys, it could even be um, changing your perspective on something, whether it's on how you view relationships, whether it's on how you view your business or where you work at. Uh, for some of you guys, maybe you're taking it upon yourself that maybe, you know, a, a change is needed. And what they're telling you here is if that's what you've been thinking about for a while, um, as an example, as an example, you've been at a company for a very long time and you feel like it's just depleted your soul and you've been wondering like what's out there. What spirit is telling you is start looking and start putting yourself out there because this is going to bring to you, um, new beginnings and new opportunities, but you kind of have to be fearless in the approach of expanding or growing. Now, your next card here is the Seven of Pentacles. This is uh, reminiscing about the past. Uh, but this, I feel like with the Hermit and the King of Swords, I feel like you are in contemplation about what it is that you want and what it is that, or where it is that you want to be in the next coming year or so. So this is you planting seeds. This is you taking action and thinking about the future beautiful energy here. And finally, we end with the nine of cups, a wish fulfillment coming through for you, Aquarians. If you feel like you're being challenged right now, or you feel like there is things about you that you don't connect to how you did in the past, it's because you've outgrown um, those situations or circumstances. But it also indicates that you're stepping into the new version of yourself it, with this new version of yourself. Um, it's bringing you or drawing you closer to your wish fulfillments and you will experience them. They will manifest for you. But in this process, it is important to really be practical in your approach of how do you execute things. So as an example, if what you're wanting for this year is to get your first house, for example, start executing, you know, start making plans, start working on your credit, start working on you know, saving money, like taking the practical approach to making things happen. That's what's going to help you. That's what's going to set you apart from the rest. But not only that, that's what's going to br bring to you that manifestation that much quicker. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Pisces. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2023. You guys don't forget to like and share and subscribe. All right. Pisces, we're starting off here with the Emperor card. This is very powerful energy. This is the entrepreneur energy. This is being in control this is uh, really being in control of your destiny right now. The emperor is all about structure. It is all about stability, right? And making moves um, and making the correct moves that are going to get you to where you want to be in life. So I see you guys being more clear minded in regards to your pursuits, in regards to your goals for this month. Um, your next card here is the nine of pentacles for some of you guys realizing that you're uh, kind of rushing or perhaps in the past you've rushed from one relationship to another the nine of pentacles as an obstacle is the fear of being alone or the fear 
of not really enjoying your singlehood. It's almost like resisting it. So if, for some of you guys, if you've recently uh, became single, what Spirit is telling you is put all your energy and your effort towards your career, towards your finances, really nurture those aspects that are going to help you feel more fulfilled and then the rest will take care of itself. You know what I mean? It's like finding yourself, um, putting all your energy or chasing your dreams and your aspirations is what motivates you. You are Pisces, you know? You are about being able to manifest through your visualization, through your imagination and taking the practical approaches to be able to see the results of that through action. So again, um, if you have if you are a Pisces that has dealt with like jumping from one relationship to another, I feel like you're becoming more empowered. And in this empowerment, I feel like you're coming to the realization of either finding yourself or really trying to figure out what makes you happy. And this is a beautiful type of energy, Pisces. Your next card here is the five of pentacles. For some of you guys, it's realizing that there is a lot of insecurity issues that you're still working through, whether it's the feeling of worthiness, whether it's the feeling of, I no longer want to feel like I am being taken for granted or like I'm being taken um, advantage of. And obviously this is a reflection of how I feel because I allow them to do that. So this is you really taking charge of your energy, Pisces. This is you really taking charge of that transformation that's been brewing behind, you know, or underneath the surface. And it's finally coming to its culmination. So I see you guys ending very much more empowered, more in control, but it has come through difficult or trialing or testing situations of feeling like being let down or constantly being let down and like you've you've hit, you've had it, you know, you've gotten to a point where I'm no longer going to be dealing with this type of energy. I see you guys more empowered, like I said, more confident in yourself as well. And the magician, powerful energy here, knowing and understanding that you are powerful, Pisces, that you can manifest and you can draw into your life everything that you've ever wanted. But it starts with yourself. It starts with your self-love, with your confidence, with knowing that you have a lot of the qualities that any person would be so grateful to have and understanding that no longer means allowing other people to take for granted or to not appreciate what you do. So this is like you being very mindful of the energy that you give as well as the energy that you receive. And those that do not um, reciprocate your energy is like you're no longer dealing with that type of energy, which is beautiful. I love seeing this for you. Now, your next card here is the 10 of pentacle stability coming through for you guys. For a lot of you guys starting a new home or wanting to create a new home or for others of you really wanting to stabilize or bring to you a stable monogamous relationship. And I definitely do see that unfolding for you guys here with the magician. Your next card here is the ace of pentacles. So a lot, I see you guys really building right now is what's happening. I feel like through this transformation that you're going through of working with yourself and working through certain traumas, you're finally being able to realize exactly what it is that you deserve. And I see you being absolutely not whatsoever. Like you're not being apologetic about it. It's like, this is what I want. This is what I deserve. And I deserve it. And really that's what sets everything up for you. That's what transmutates everything in a very positive way, bringing to you the stability for some of you guys bringing in that engagement that you've been hoping or wanting. Ten of pentacles and ace of pentacles here. This for some of you guys can actually be the ring, um, the offer that comes through or the promise of something stable coming through for you guys. Now your next card here is the hanged man. This is the advice, learning to see things from a different perspective, being able to really understand that there is literally no limit that you can set. Um, we're the only ones that set ourselves our own limits and being able to see that is very powerful. Why? Because you see yourself as the magician. You see yourself as the person of power that you're able to draw in and bring to you exactly what it is that you want through how you feel about yourself, how you value and see yourself. 
Next card here is the death card, major transformation. This is the energy that's currently influencing you. This is Pluto's energy for some of you. Um, major transformative type of energy. There are cycles that are ending right now, but the beauty in this is that it's bringing to you new opportunities, new beginnings as well. Your next card here is the Ten of Wands, no longer dealing with the burdens or the difficulties. This is you rearranging your life, freeing yourself from things that are no longer necessary to be able to align yourself to the newer version of yourself that is much more fulfilled with the Justice card here as well. Balance, uh, bringing to you balance for some of you guys, this could be bringing an ending to a relationship that was extremely toxic for some of you. And getting out of that is what's going to bring to you the forefront of learning to heal and work um, through these energies to finally be able to transform your life completely. Pisces, beautiful energy here. All right, my lovelies. And now we are going to do Aries. Last but not least, my lovely Aries. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of May 2023. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for Aries for this month of May 2023? Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Aries. Your first card here is the Five of Wands, competition. Competition is surrounding you at this point in time. Your next card here is the Knight of Swords. So for some of you guys, there is a lot of competition that you may be feeling or you yourself may be feeling a bit competitive this month. Not necessarily a bad thing with the Knight of Swords. Really chasing or taking action towards certain things that maybe in the past you were a little bit more complacent about. Your next card here is the Queen of Swords. So it could have been the desire to connect or uh, build some type of relationship with this queen here. Um, doesn't have to be a queen. It could be masculine energy. Um, air energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius type of energy. For some of you guys, uh, you could have been interested in this person, but perhaps felt a little bit intimidated where, like I said, in the past, you were more passive. I see you guys taking more action. Um, so this could be primarily you being a little bit more aggressive, Aries, um, this month and taking action towards the things that you are wanting. Being unapologetic about it. <laughs> Your next card here is the Six of Cups. So it could it be a friendship or a relationship um, that was based on friendship where perhaps you were a bit intimidated because maybe you are aware that this person has a lot of suitors um, or that this woman or that this, if it's a male, um, that they have a lot of like options or whatnot with the six of cups though, there is a fear. There was a fear of jeopardizing the friendship for some of you guys. That could be the reason why you kind of held back. Um, your next card here is the two of wands expansion growth. Like I said, I see you guys being more aggressive in your approach to the things that you want. It's like, I know what I want and I'm going after it and I'm not apologizing for it. And Kudos to you, Aries, because I do see you more empowered. I do see you chasing your dreams. I see you knowing that you deserve them. And it's like, I'm going to get them. I'm going to attain them. So I see you guys more empowered this month. And I am definitely loving this type of vibe. We have this star card here. So again, alignment. This is astrologically right now. You're being greatly influenced. Um, there are almost like ending chapters that are happening in your life where you could have been dealing with people that would come in temporarily, then go out and then come back again. You're going to start to notice that a lot of your friend group starts to change. For some of you guys, you're connecting and rebuilding your friendships, your social circles um, with people that are more like-minded like you, that are more in alignment to what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to do in this life. And for some of you guys, if you're not dealing with anyone, this can indicate building a friendship that has the potential for something long term uh, with the star card here. So it's in alignment of, like I said, almost like perfect time, perfect, perfect timing, perfect um, being around the right people, the right time type of energy. 
For some of you guys, it could be that you will be introduced uh, to a new person in your life this month of May, and it could come through friendship. So it could be a friend that introduces you to this new person that definitely takes your breath away because the start card is like the perfect person, the person I always visualize or the person I always dreamt of finally coming through for you. And I feel greatly for a lot of you guys, this person's coming through or will be introduced to you through a friend. Now, your next card here is the King of Pentacles. This is the advice. And the advice here with the King of Pentacles is knowing and understanding that, yes, you deserve to be happy, that, yes, you deserve stability. If stability is something you've been chasing or you've been trying to manifest for quite a while, you definitely start to see the outcome of that this month. You definitely start to see uh, the fruits of your labor coming through. For a lot of you guys, there is an increase, a bonus, unexpected money that's coming through for you for this month of May as well. Now, your next card here is the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands is having really gone through it. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're going through a cycle of rebuilding um, is what I'm hearing. So it could be rebuilding connections. It could be rebuilding yourself. It could be rebranding your business. Uh, something that is almost like you came to the realization that something wasn't working and I'm fixing it now and I'm working towards uh, making it more of my own or making it more of what I want. And this is the rebuilding process and you're at the end cycle, a new beginning, a new chapter, like I said, coming through for you guys. Now, your next card here is the Hermit. Uh, maybe you've been so busy uh, really working in your life or working on your life to uh, attain or, or maybe you've been very, very motivated uh, towards achieving goals and you've been extremely pulled yourself away for a while. I, the hermit is always, always to me isolation. So for some of you guys, you're coming out of this isolation. You're coming out of this being in solitude and being more social and putting yourself out there. I see you guys really, I'm not going to lie. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you've been working uh, primarily on stabilizing certain aspects of your life that consumed you a lot or that took a lot of your focus and you could have gone through a almost like a cycle of like hermit mode. Uh, sorry, almost a cycle like of hermit mode, not really going out, not really being social. Uh, but that's quickly going to be changing as I do see this month being uh, much more greatly social. I do see you guys coming out of your shell. Uh, I see you guys like no longer creating barriers. So I see you guys much more open and the energy will flow more organically that way. And the reason for this is because you're walking away from things that no longer serve you. You've done your, basically you've done your time, Aries, and I feel like this rebuilding that I keep hearing has a lot to do with the, the finding a new purpose or finding a new way of building or transforming your life that is going to greatly impact you for the next coming years. So. For a lot of you guys, I feel like you're starting to see the results of your goals or the things that you've been trying to chase and achieve. I see it coming through fruition for you guys this month and even going all the way to July. Um, so again, anything that is no longer serving you, don't let that hold you back, Aries. It's time to embrace a new way of living. All right, my lovelies. I hope that you guys enjoyed all of these readings. I hope that... Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I hope that they gave you some type of insight. I want to wish you guys all the very best for this month of May. Stay tuned for the love readings coming through for you guys. And I, like I said, if you guys are interested in any of the journals or the book, you can find all of that on the description box below. I will see you guys then. Till then. Bye.